about in Romans 9, 10, and 11. The Israel. And he makes an example. Here's what Israel's to do. Here's what we need to do. But notice in that verse there, it doesn't say to confess our sins. Do you see that? Some people say, well, we need to confess. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, say you need to confess your sins. It doesn't say us to confess our sins in that verse there. Do you see sins anywhere in that verse? But people will try to use that. Well, we need to confess. That word is also used, in other words, has the idea of making a profession of your faith that comes from your heart. Okay? Notice I. In 1 John 1 9 is an invitation to the Jews and Israel. These Jews, if they confessed their sin, would get forgiveness of sins according to the new covenant and be cleansed of all the past unrighteousness committed. As a nation. We know they were under the old, uh, the old, I'm sorry, the old covenant. And Christ died on the cross, gave the potential for Israel for the new covenant. where God would forgive their sins and everything. And the Jew was being saved according to this new covenant when he will take away their sins, give them a new heart, put his spirit inside of them, and so on. Okay? Now, today, think. 1 John 1, 9, reverse the verse. If we don't, confess our sins. He won't be faithful and just to forgive our sins. If we have one sin, we would go to hell. As Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden's paradise for one sin. In other words, if you, if you say that's for us today, just reverse that verse. Then if you don't confess your sins, you still have sin. If I still have sin, no sin will enter heaven. Did you follow what I just said? Three, if we today in the body of Christ have to confess our sins, this is the way I feel anyway, that is a work. That cannot be when associated with sin because grace is then removed. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. I'm under a grace scenario in the body of Christ not a performance. Now, am I to live for Christ? Of course I am. But I live because of my identity with Christ, because of me being in Christ, because of Him through the Spirit of God being in me, because my love for Christ, for, my, uh, for the Spirit of God who's working through the Word of God inside of me and everything, trying to produce these things in my life. I was created in Christ Jesus and two good works. You know, we do those things, you know, and we falter at times. When we falter, we repent, we go on. But we don't need to constantly feel guilty and downbeat because I've allowed some sin to enter my life. I need to repent of that sin, forsake it, move on with my life, but I don't have to worry about not confessing those sins because those sins have already been taken care of. I just said a lot there now, okay? Okay? I don't think we realize what we have in Christ. Now, is God going to beat us over the head if we confess our sins? No, I'm not saying that. I, I, you know, 
I think we need to come and say, God, I've sinned, and I want to turn. I ask you to help me, strengthen me so I don't repeat that sin or whatever. But I want to thank you. I already know they're forgiven. I already know they've all been taken care of. But those sins nailed you to the cross that you died for. And I feel bad about that. Godly sorrow. <laughs> you know, and I want to do better in my life. So I'm repenting, I'm forsaken, I'm moving on. But I know my sins are forgiven. I know those things can't keep me from a relationship with God. I'm one of his children. I'm safe. I'm secure. I'm part of his body. Always accepted in the beloved. Now, boy, what security. What peace. What a calmness of assurance that we have in being in Christ. Not that he's over us with a hammer. He's going to beat us because I, I, I sin some way. <laughs> it's called grace. Okay, where am I? I forgot my place. JJ, okay. Jay, if we are to fellowship, let us fellowship in the mystery program <laughs> so we can rightly interpret Scripture. And those verses, if you'll see in them, you'll just find out that the only way we can ever get a glimpse of the true wisdom of God is to get in and understand the mystery program because the mystery program is the wisdom of God. And it's only as I get in there, I learn more of that, and I see how God has arranged this secret program right here called the body of Christ. And I see the prophetic program, and you just step back and you realize... He is an all-wise God. The Jews blew it. That's why they're being punished. But God did not forget mankind. He knew his people would fail before the foundation of the world. He already had this purpose and plan so that mankind, because his nation failed to go to all the world, that mankind still would have an opportunity to be able to be saved. And he created the body of Christ for us. That's where we are today. And one day we're going up, but he hadn't forgotten his people. He loves them. And it's during the trib that they will believe. The little flock, the remnant, will believe in Christ. Okay? So I believe when he says he's making comparison between those in chapter 1, between those that are lost, and those that would be saved. It has to do with their identity with Abraham, their identity with the Spirit of God because of being saved. But also, being a Jew, it was imperative that they repent and confess their sins individually and for their nation because that nation had rebelled and sinned against God. God dealt with them, dealt with them differently than he does with us. Just like he says in Matthew 6, if you forgive them, I will forgive you. But if you don't forgive them, I won't forgive you. That's called conditional forgiveness. Likewise, if we confess our sins, that is conditional. You and I, it's not conditional forgiveness. We have been forgiven already. So we come from a position of being forgiven. Not ever have, if I don't forgive somebody, it's not, if I don't forgive somebody and God holds that sin against me, sin sends you to hell. But since all my sin has been forgiven, I don't have, it's not conditional. Now, is it best for me to forgive somebody? Of course it is. I understand that. But I'm coming from the position that I've already been forgiven and it's, no, it's not conditional. It's based up on faith and grace in the gospel. That makes sense? Okay. 
question, then we'll take off. Go Colts. You all happy as a result today? Huh? It was a great game, wasn't it? Huh? I was watching Gary Shook. I think that's his name. Anybody ever see him, the bald-headed young guy preacher? Anyway, he's got one of these uh, newer type churches and a uh, great, great family, and he has a great church, and uh, it's real interesting. They don't rightly divide anything like that. You know, use wrong versions, all that stuff. But his son, who's a teenager, was given a, what had happened. He, both his sons, they've been in church all their life and so on, but something was missing and they felt empty and so they thought about it and they made this little film and it's about 12 minutes long I'm going to get it for the church and show I want my teens to see it for sure and it showed how we seek all these other things in order to fill that hole that we have inside of us at times even as Christians we go to church we say the right things, we do the right things over and over and over, and we become complacent and we begin to question our faith uh, because we're not seeking the fullness of God. And so he made this little movie, this little quickie movie, about 10, 11 minutes long. You can pull it up on the website. Pull it up. It's uh, Pastor Gary Shook is the pastor. And... Uh, uh, his sons uh, made this little th thing. And if you could see that, I want you to watch that in our life because I think it says something to us about having a purpose and seeking that purpose is having the fullness of God actively involved in our heart and in our lives. And when you have that, you don't always keep that. You know, you get complacent again. You have to keep going back. You have to keep going back in the sense that you have to keep going back to the Word in your relationship with God, your involvement with Him, so you can experience that fullness, that passion, that purpose, and then you don't have that hope. He says, I thought it was really good. He said, you try all these other things. He made a list of all kinds of things. And he says, and after you do them, you're still empty. None of that satisfies. There's only one thing that can actually satisfy you, and that's in your relationship with God. And so you need to see that. Okay? Let's have a word of prayer. Yes, ma'am.